Good evening. I'm Jack Fuji, and welcome to the seventh session of Agriculture 194N, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one-credit course offered by the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from 7 to 8.30 p.m via the Hawaii Interactive Television System and your local community service channel. This evening we are featuring Banyan Hibachi, a restaurant that's located next to the Nani Loa Hotel. For those of you joining us for the first time, Focus on Agriculture is a course uh, designed to inform you about the various aspects of diversified agriculture and every semester we focus on a different subject area of diversified agriculture. And this semester, we're focusing on various chefs from restaurants in the Hilo area, preparing dishes, emphasizing local agricultural products. Before I go on, I'd like to make a few announcements. First of all, if I may have the Elmo, uh, I'd like you to tune in to focus on UH Hilo this coming Tuesday, October 14th, uh, on this very same channel from 8 to 8.30 p.m. We will have uh, our host, Dr. William Pierman, who is the Senior Vice President and Chancellor of UH Hilo, and his guest will be Dr. Robert King, Associate Professor of Marketing and the chairman of the UHH Strategic Planning Committee. Okay. And Dr. King will talk about the new uh, University of Hawaii at Hilo strategic plan. So if you're wondering what UH is up to, please tune in next Tuesday evening uh, with Dr. Bill Pierman. Also, I'd like to uh, remind you that the seventh annual Hawaii Conference of the World Sustainable Agriculture Association will have its annual conference uh, at the Royal Kona Resort Hotel on November 8th and 9th. And the theme of the conference is Living the Land. And if you'd like more information about uh, this uh, World Sustainable Agriculture Association conference, please call 808-595-6344. Also, I'd like to mention that the uh, University of Hawaii at Hilo College of Agriculture and the UH Manoa College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources will present a hydroponics conference and field trip. Uh, This will be located on the University of Hawaii at Hilo Agriculture Farm in Paneeva, and this is scheduled for November 14th and a field trip on November 15th. And if you're interested in this hydroponic conference, please call Dwight Sato at 959-9155. Also, uh, the UH Hilo and the Center for the Asia Pacific Exchange will hold the ninth annual language and culture uh, seminar. And uh, the seminar topic this year will be an introduction to the culture and language of Japan. Uh, That's an introduction to the culture and language of Japan. That's on November 22nd on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon at the UH Hilo Campus Center, room 306-307. This seminar is free. However, you must register. And if you'd like the registration form, Uh, Please write to me at uh, UH Hilo College of Agriculture, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, or you may call for a registration form at 974-7393, or you can email me at jfujii at hawaii.edu. Okay, that's uh, the announcement for uh, today. And uh, I'd like to remind you, since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience, and of course, those of you here in the studio audience can ask questions of our guest speaker. And for those of you on the outer island, we have a special phone uh, a number that you can call us collect. I hope you don't change the channel. We have another very interesting presentation for you this evening. As I mentioned earlier, we are featuring Banyan Hibachi and our guests this evening 
are as follows. Uh, we have the owner of Banyan Hibachi. His name is Fong Kuo. And uh, he's been uh, in the cooking business for approximately three years. And he's been at Banyan Hibachi for one year. Then we have Michael Hill. Michael Hill's there in the center. He's a UH Hilo graduate, and he graduated in the area of business education. And finally, uh, joining Fong and uh, Michael, we have Wei Chen. Uh, he is the chef at Banyan Hibachi, and he's been uh, there for approximately a year, and he has uh, six years of professional uh, cooking uh, so uh, he's got a lot of experience. Actually, he said he's been cooking since he was a little kid. So he's got a lot of years of experience cooking. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Fong Kuo and uh, his um, crew here. So why don't we start cooking? Right. Tonight, uh, first thing we're going to start with is a uh, fresh steamed Kali Kali. It's uh, Kali Kali, of course, we got right here in Hilo. First thing you're going to want to do with it, um, what you've already done is have it filleted and descaled. Fish should be about a pound and a half to about two pounds. And right now, uh, David is going to start s making some small incisions along the fillet just to help it cook a little bit faster. Maybe about two to three inches and then one long one right down the center. So is this fish, Kali uh, Kali, is it uh, quite uh, readily available in the stores? Um, right now it should be. If you don't have that, there's a couple other fish you can use. You can use an opaka paka. Just about anything about this size would do just fine. He's just getting it prepared to go into the steamer. This tea leaf in there just to protect the fish so it doesn't stick onto the steamer when it's in there. I'm going to um, rub some salt right onto the fillet just for a little bit of flavor, maybe about a half a teaspoon on each side. And then a little bit of white pepper right over the top of the fillet. All of these just to your liking, however you want to spice your fish. And he's going to use a little bit of the um, Chinese rice wine. If you don't have this, you can use any kind of sake or dry white wine that you might be able to find in the store. And it should be all ready to go in. I'm sorry, one more thing. You're going to put a little bit of uh, julienne ginger right on the top for flavor. And is this a regular uh, dinner item on the menu? This is a special. We try to do a lot of fresh seafood specials. This depends on what we can go down to the uh, market and pick up. Um, this past week, it just happened to be Kali Kali. Uh, we do fresh mahi-mahi when it's available. We um, not only steam whole fish, we do steam fillets, like I said, mahi-mahi, ona, whatever we can find. Now he's going he's gonna to put it in the steamer for about 15 minutes. If, depending on how you like your fish done, you can do it 12 minutes, 17 minutes. just depends on the, how, how dry you want your fish. And when is the Banyan Hibachi open for business? We are open every day for dinner, excuse me, not Sundays. We're open Monday through Saturday for dinner, 5 to 9. And we do lunch from 11 to 1 every day except for Sunday. 
David's going to start on the uh, next recipe. It's called uh, sweet rice meatballs, while we're waiting for the uh, fish to steam. He's starting with about half a pound or so of um, ground pork or ground beef, whichever you prefer. One egg. A little bit of uh, minced ginger. And about half a teaspoon. Some green onions. And a little bit of salt. White pepper. And of course, after you try this recipe, if you think that there was not enough salt, you can always uh, add as much as you please, right? Absolutely. And, and what was that that you just added there? Again, that's the uh, Chinese rice wine. And okay. um, you can substitute that for sake or any type of wine you prefer. We like it just because of the flavor, but it is uh, a little difficult to get. Where, where, oh, yeah, where can you get that? Uh, we order it um, directly from Chinatown on Oahu, from a grocer who supplies us with the, uh, a few of our hard-to-get items. Does it have a unique flavor that's different from, say, a regular white wine? Or? It's a little extra dry, a little bit drier than you'd be able to find in probably a Chardonnay or something like that. So it gives it a little bit deeper flavor. mixing it up here, making sure it's mixed really well. And then the next thing he's going to do is start to form about a one inch um, meatball with this. So Fong Wei, uh, or, uh, or uh, rather uh, both of uh, Kuo, Fong Kuo and uh, Wei Chen, both of you are originally from Taiwan, right? Uh, I'm from Taiwan originally, but Wei's from uh, Man China. I see. So these are kind of uh, authentic uh, Chinese dishes that we're preparing tonight. Some of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, a lot of Chinese flavoring with uh, some local uh, flavoring added to it, right? Exactly. And, and what, what, what is that on that plate there that you... What's da what David has done is poured out some sticky rice, or some sweet rice, excuse sweet me. Rice. And what he's going to do is when he forms the meatballs, he's going to roll them into the uh, rice to make sure uh -huh. they're covered. That's uh, mochi rice, right? Yeah, uh, mochi exactly. rice. Okay. And do you folks uh, do take out uh, lunches or dinners, uh, take out uh, for lunch uh, at... Uh, Banyan Hibachi? Right, we do take out lunch uh, every day, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 1. And we have a, uh, a menu of about seven items and then one daily special. I see. Price ranges go from about $5 up to about $7. And uh, how much early warning do you have to give uh, Banyan Hibachi before you can pick up the plate lunch? We ask for a, a couple of minutes, at least maybe 15 or 20. Okay. Yes. This, of course, would be an appetizer. We don't have this on the menu currently, but it's kind of a newer recipe that we're just starting to work with. Most of the uh, dishes that we have at the restaurant are kind of an international flavor. We do a little bit of Chinese, we do some American, we do things like prime rib and whatnot. Um, we also have some local favorites like chicken katsu and that kind of thing too. And for those of you who just joined us, uh, Channel Surfing, uh, you're watching Focus on Agriculture, a one-credit course offered by the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. This evening we're featuring Banyan Hibachi, and uh, they are preparing for you at the present time sweet rice meatballs. And uh, in the steamer we have uh, steam fresh kali kali which we'll be waiting to take out a little later once again david's uh, 
just rolling them into about one inch ball and then we're covering them with the sweet rice making sure that as much as possible is completely covered with the rice. And then what, what happens to the meatballs uh, covered with uh, mochi rice? Uh? They're going to go right into the steamer after this. I see. And they cook for about half an hour. And uh, the mochi rice will be nice and soft by that time? Yes. Oh, that's very interesting. I've never seen that. It gives a very different texture to it. It's a little bit uh, chewy on the outside and then really nice on the inside. Seems like a recipe that I might be able to do. Yeah, they're pretty simple. And of course, uh, we will be putting out a cookbook at the end of the semester. And in that cookbook, we'll have all the recipes that appeared on our Focus on Agriculture class. And of course, if any of you out in the viewing audience would like to share a recipe with us, please send it in and uh, we'll incorporate it into our cookbook with your name. Okay, David's getting ready to put that into the steamer. Once again, it'll be in there for about half an hour or so. So that's a, a real nice steamer there. You can uh, cook several meals at uh, one time. Uh huh. Okay. Watch the next. Are we starting on the next one? Okay. Next one we're going to be making is called a fonyon tofu with sweet sour sauce. And um, the, scallops. Right. The first thing we're going to do is start with some scallops. What David's going to do is he's going to dice them up and try and kind of mash them to make a little bit of a paste. It's going to um, become a filling for the tofu, so he needs to get it as thin as possible. Scallop size we're using here are about 20 to 30 count and about four pieces. And do you need the uh, firm tofu or the... Uh... Definitely need the soft tofu. The softer the better. And I'll show you why in a minute. He's going to cut it up and it needs to be... Uh, it needs to, to um, be pretty flexible. So the softer your tofu, the better. And now he's just kind of um, dicing and kind of uh, mashing up the scallops little green onion in the mixture, and a little bit of chopped ginger. A weed, do you like that big uh, knife there? Is that easier to use than a regular cleaver? He's being quiet with it tonight. Usually can make a lot more noise. I see. Okay. I, I don't think he heard me. But, uh. okay, he's just going to place this on the side for now. About a half a teaspoon or so of salt, just to your, uh, to your liking. A little bit more white pepper. And once again, the, uh, the old Chinese rice one. Probably about a teaspoon or so of that. It's very strong in flavor, so if you're using sake or a regular white wine, you could put a little bit more in there. So if you went to Chinatown uh, over there on Monacea Street in, on Oahu, you can probably pick up this uh, uh, Chinese uh, white wine? Most likely, yeah. I'm sure you'd be able to find it somewhere. Yeah, but in Hilo, it's kind of hard to come by, is it? We haven't been able to find it. I see. Is there, is there a particular uh, brand name that uh, is better? Or? If I went to Chinatown, I can just ask for the uh, Chinese uh, white wine and uh, that'll do. That should do. That should help you. There probably is a brand name there. Unfortunately, I don't think I could pronounce it for you. Okay. <laughs> David's going to take the uh, tofu. Once again, it should be um, as soft as possible. And he's going to cut it into um, about one and a half inch squares that are about three eighths or so of an inch thick. So the, the softer variety of tofu is, uh, 
is better for this particular dish. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't really be able to do it um, with the hard tofu. It wouldn't work out very well for you. And um, what he's going to do is he's actually going to take one of the squares and after he um, cuts it down to size, he's going to cut it, cut like a pocket down the middle of it to put the scallop stuffing into the middle of it. So your tofu needs to be um, very flexible. So if you watch him closely, what he's doing is he's taking a first cut that doesn't go all the way down, and then he chops off the piece, which leaves him a place to uh, stuff the uh, scallop mixture into. This mixture should be good for about 10 pieces, but I think David's only going to be doing about five or so for us today. And what was the purpose for that, uh, that, that short cut in the middle? He's going to show us right now. He's going to um, place this uh, scallop mixture right in the middle of that, of the tofu. He's going to be real gentle when he opens it using the back of the spoon because it's, uh, it is very soft. And you're gonna, he's going to try his best uh, not to tear it. This is the scallop uh, mixture? Yes. Scallops, green onions, ginger, and then of course salt and pepper and uh, rice wine to taste. This is the uh, difficult part of the recipe. Like a miniature fajita. There you go. But made of tofu. Uh -huh. Exactly. This once again is a, uh, another appetizer that we're trying out. Haven't decided whether or not uh, we're going to use it on our menu yet, but a newer recipe that we're working with. And this is an authentic dish from Taiwan or China? China. China, okay. Yeah. Fengya is a, a place uh, that we from. He is from there. Okay. The next step um, in the recipe is going to prepare a, a um, egg white uh, mixture here. What he's going to do is he's going to take the white of about five eggs. You need one egg for each piece of um, tofu that you're going to use. So he's got five here. And he's going to separate the whites out from the eggs right now. And then, of course, um, blend it up. This takes a steady hand. And uh, at the present time, uh, Wei Chen is uh, separating the eggs for Fong Yong tofu with sweet sour sauce. And in the steamer, we have fresh uh, kali kali and uh, sweet rice meatballs. So uh, pretty soon uh, those will be coming out. And do you do uh, a large uh, uh, dinners for uh, different groups uh, if, if you wanted to? Or Absolutely. We have a, um, the restaurant can seat up to about 200 people. So we could do a pretty large group of, of, um, of diners. Uh, we do have a party room also, which holds about 40 people. And uh, that's set as a private setting where you could um, have meetings and whatnot. We also do a family style dining off of our menu where um, kind of like a um, Chinese service where we place the dishes in the center of the table and then each person can uh, serve themselves. Okay. And what is uh, we doing now? He's getting the um, oil hot here for this recipe which he'll be using after he finishes with the egg whites. The oil needs to be about 250 degrees or so. Um, you don't want it too hot because it'll, it'll burn the uh, egg whites very quickly. So you need to be careful of that. He's going to be adding in about four tablespoons of uh, cornstarch now. 
So Michael, you graduated uh, from uh, UH Hilo uh, in the business, uh, business econ department. Uh, what, what did you like about UH Hilo? Um, actually, the classes were really nice. The professors um, give you a lot of attention. The upper division classes are very small. It's, uh, I think you get a lot more attention here than you would at um, some of the larger schools. And of course, the same is true with the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. I had to get that in there. Uh, excellent place to come to school. So if you know of anybody who's interested in an uh, excellent college career, uh, learning with Aloha, uh, try UH Hilo. Uh, very excellent program here. Not only in the College of Arts and Sciences, but also in the College of Agriculture. And how long do you uh, whip the egg whites? He's going to whip it for about five minutes. What he's looking for is for the egg whites to start to peak, which means that when he pulls up the blender, it'll leave peaks in the uh, mixture. Of course, he's got it on the highest setting right now. Oh, now he does. <laughs> and the, um, the more air you can mix in here, the better. It's going to help your recipe form a little bit better. So. The longer you, longer you whip these eggs, the better. So this, this uh, particular dish is like an appetizer that you uh, serve before the main, main course, right? Yes. Uh, Ted, could you add something else uh, inside the stuffing or we? Can you put something else in the tofu other than scallops if you wanted? If you wanted to put shrimp in, can you put uh, shrimp in there? I see. So it doesn't necessarily have to be scallops. You can put in no. shrimp or yeah. whatever. Yeah, even ground pork or ground beef. I see. That'd be fine. But you have to be very careful when you cut the tofu and make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, fall apart, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later on in the class, uh, Wei is uh, very good at carving, uh, uh, I guess, uh, various vegetables into nice uh, looking flowers. So uh, if we have some time, we'll probably do that. And that's that's the cornstarch. Corn he's starch. Anyway. Okay, that's that's quite a bit of cornstarch. It helps to um, give it body when it's being cooked in the oil, so that the egg whites don't go uh, right down. I see. You got to blend that in real carefully with the with the blender. Right. You want to be careful not to. Um, Otherwise, we'll have cornstarch flying all over the place. <laughs> huh? It could be, it could get messy. Uh, I can see that uh, Weez has uh, a lot of experience at this. <laughs> He's done it quite a few times. Just want to blend it in so you get a nice even mixture. And again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Focus on Agriculture, a one-credit course offered by the College of Agriculture, University of Hawaii Hilo. And if you enjoy watching the class every Thursday evening, please let your friends know about it. Okay, I think it's about ready. What he's going to do next is um, start to take some of the egg white mixture. Yeah, deep uh, fried. Right. Yeah, like stuff. Right. It's going to take some of the egg white, egg white mixture and kind of make a cocoon around the, um, the tofu, about the size of um, an egg or so. And this is a um, special dish. Uh, is that. Uh, Ted from uh, China, you say Fangyong is a is a province in China? Yeah, that that's a, a city. A county in China. Oh, I'm sorry, county. <laughs> a county in China. Okay. So as you can see, what he's doing is kind of just um, shaping the egg whites around the tofu that's in his hand. Kind of just making a nice cocoon, making sure it's nice and covered there. 
you want to be really gentle with it. And he's going to gently put it into the um, hot oil. You could use any kind of vegetable oil that you prefer for this. Oh, this is really unique. He's going to um, cook these until they start turning just a little bit of a golden brown, and turning them uh, really often to make sure that they're cooking evenly on both sides. Does it shrink or? Yeah, this is a recipe that you want to do. Um, you, you don't want to cook until you're ready to serve it, because what will happen is as soon as it comes out of the um, hot oil, they'll start to shrink down. So you want to be sure that you um, cook these as soon as you're ready to serve them. You can see as they get into the hot oil, they begin to um, puff up a little bit. We is this a popular uh, dish in China? Uh, not very popular. It's very difficult to make. Okay. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so th this would be considered a, a uh, delicacy in, in China. Yes, it is. Wow, well, I can't uh, wait to try this one out uh, this evening. Well, this type of appetizer, you got to eat right away. Got to eat it right away? Yeah. Well, folks, I mean, I can eat it uh, before the students have a chance to get it tonight. Sorry, folks. <laughs> They're starting to um, puff up really nicely, so what David's going to do is start turning them with a the, uh, yeah. the spoon. Yeah. Making sure they're cooking mm -hmm. on all the sides there. Oh yeah, there. It is. That, that, that's a creamy color that you want to see. Exactly. You can see they're really soft on the outside. Although they've puffed up quite a bit, they're really uh, delicate. So you need to be gentle with them when you're turning. Otherwise, they'll, they'll um, go right down on you. It looks like a dessert to me, but I guess this, this is, is this a dessert? Would you consider it a dessert, or would you consider this uh, uh, appetizer? Or? Both. Both, OK. David has just taken out the, um, the steam Kali Kali, let it cool off for a little while. And uh, do you serve this particular dish uh, at the restaurant, at the Banyan Hibachi? Yes, we do. Okay. But uh, is that on the menu, or do you have to ask for it, or is it a special? Uh, it's special. Okay. Yeah. David has to be in a good mood if he's going to make this one. <laughs> it's going to work. So th this probably would not be a dish that you would want to take out. It would be better to eat this dish at the restaurant. Absolutely, yeah. You want to eat this um, right away. While we're waiting for the uh, tofu to cook, David's going to take out the kali kali that we uh, steamed earlier. So whole fish about um, a pound and a half to two pounds should be able to easily feed um, two. Well, it's going to have to feed about yeah. 15 tonight. <laughs> uh, 
and the upper end of the dish, you can see that nice uh, beet that has been carved into a, a flower that looks like a protea. And if we have some time, uh, we will um, try to carve one for you. And what's that going on top? He's putting a little bit of uh, julienne green onions on the top there. Okay. And then a little bit of shoyu. Aloha shoyu. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, we, uh, Don't show that other side. <laughs> and he's um, heated up a little bit of oil here. And what he's going to do as soon as it's hot enough is just pour it over the fish. And that's going to help release some of the flavors in the ginger and, and the green onion. What, what kind of uh, oil is that? that uh, he um, used a vegetable oil. But you could use, if you want a little bit more flavor, you could use a peanut oil. Um, Basically, any type of vegetable oil you'd like. It's fine. OK. Oh, now they're really uh, starting to nice get that, and brown. Starting to get that nice golden brown color to them. Okay, he's just going to pour the hot oil right over the top of the fish. And there you have it. It's your fresh hey. steamed kali kali. So maybe we can... Oh, that smells so good. And maybe if we can get the overhead camera to zoom in on this uh, fresh steamed kali kali. How is it? Like that, there we go. I think I can, okay. So that's the steam fresh Kali Kali and we still have the sweet uh, rice meatballs uh, in the steamer. And uh, we're also preparing the Fong Yong tofu with sweet sour sauce and uh, What's happening now? David's getting ready to uh, prepare a really quick sweet sour sauce. What he, he's done so far is put about a half a cup of water, heating that up, and then he's got a, some sugar there. He's going to put in um, about uh, three tablespoons of sugar. This is a really quick um, sweet sour sauce. A little bit of salt. and then some uh, red vinegar. And some ketchup. That's, that, that must be a little Americanized uh, <laughs> sweet sour sauce there, huh? Okay. Right, and then his uh, last ingredient here is gonna be a little bit of cornstarch um, to help thicken it up. He's just letting it come to a real quick boil, and then he'll put in the cornstarch. Ted, do they have ketchup in, in, in Taiwan now? Um, yeah, from U.S., I think. Okay. Uh, we had that a long time ago, when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> just stirring it up to make a nice mixture, and you can see it's starting to thicken already, just about ready. That uh, really looks simple to make. It's quite easy. Really, qu really quick sauce. Tofu should be just about ready to um, come out of the oil here. So David has the um, sauce ready to pour on top of the tofu because, like I said earlier, it, w it will go down um, as soon as it's taken out of the hot oil.
And what is the uh, average serving of this uh, dish per person? This appetizer, about this size, we usually, we usually do about five to six pieces, um, probably serve three or four people. I see. And he's just going to pour the sweet sour sauce right over the top of it. And it's all ready to eat. There we go. And if we can get the overhead camera on this, uh, there we go. You can see that beautiful uh, rose uh, that's carved out of a beet. And what was this again, uh, Michael? This is the Falnion tofu with sweet sour sauce. And uh, yeah, I should taste it, but it looked kind of <laughs> hot. Uh, but uh, what, what's uh, what's next on the menu here? Hibachi we're, eggplant. We're right? going to be doing the hibachi eggplant, and um, he's starting with some, of course, some fresh island eggplant, the uh, the long eggplant, about three pieces. What he's done so far is he's um, already peeled the stem off and um, he's prepared two already by um, cutting some uh, 45 degree angle cuts into them. In just a minute I think he's going to show us how he did that on one of them. That's the one, one of these that he cut. Oh, may, uh, maybe, uh, why, why don't you just put that right uh, if you can see this, uh, it's been uh, cut so that it can, I don't know if you can zoom into that. You can see the, the fine cuts on there. Okay. So you're going you're gonna to do some more of that. Okay. So he's just going to take the eggplant here on one side and make some 45 degree cuts, not all the way through. This is a really important um, process in the recipe and if you don't get this done your recipe is not going to come out right. The reason for it is to um, help the uh, eggplant cook through when it's in the uh, when it's in the oil. So he just flips it around makes the exact same cut on the other side. So the trick to it is make sure the point of the knife hits the cutting board so you don't cut all the way through. Exactly. And he's just going to kind of stretch it out to make sure that the cuts are, are, uh, all, are through the eggplant. Oh, so this is the way you cook the eggplants real fast. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. It ensures a real even cook in the eggplant too, so the outside isn't um, well cooked and the inside still raw. And while Wei is uh, cutting the eggplant, I'd just like to mention uh, uh, I received a letter from uh, Clarence Ono from Aiea on the island of Oahu, and he had mentioned something about uh, using gloves. Uh, using gloves, uh, he said, was not necessarily uh, uh, being real clean because it depends on the individuals. Uh, like if you... Uh, prepare chicken and use a glove and then you don't take the glove off and you leave the glove on and, and uh, try another dish uh, without changing it, you can transfer bacteria and things like that from one dish to another. So uh, I think the key is uh, to, to always uh, wash your hands or whatever, but uh, thank you very much Clarence for your letter. Okay, David. Um has the oil heating up. And if you wanted to, you can actually put the uh, eggplant over a hibachi, or is it better to fry it? It's better to fry it. Okay. It'll give it a little bit uh, more even cooking. And do, do you want to get that frying pan real hot, or? Once again, about uh, 250 degrees. He's using just a vegetable oil here. Whatever you prefer is fine. He's going to place them right into the oil. At the restaurant, normally we would um, be using a wok to do this. So 
like this. If you didn't make the cuts on the side of the eggplant, uh, it would take much longer to, uh, to cook, right? Exactly. <laughs> this dish is um, one of our best sellers at the restaurant right now. Pretty simple to make. Is this a regular item on the uh, menu, or is it a uh, special again? This is a regular dinner, dinner menu item. He's using the um, tongs here to feel the eggplant. As soon as it becomes soft, he'll know that um, they're ready to be taken out of the oil. And again, for those of you who just tuned in, you're watching Focus on Agriculture, a one-credit course offered by the College of Agriculture at the University of Hawaii Hilo. And we are coming to you live this evening, as we do every Thursday night. And if you enjoy watching Focus on Agriculture, please let others uh, know about it so they can enjoy along with you. Looks like the eggplants are just about ready. He's going to leave them in the um, strainer there to drain off some of the oil. Next, David's going to start um, to prepare the sauce that goes over the top of the eggplant. And what kind of sauce is uh, that that you're going to make? It's a mandarin sauce. Um, it's a little bit spicy. It's made with ground pork and a few other ingredients here. Okay. Once again, a little bit of uh, vegetable oil. He has some um, chopped garlic here that he's going to put in the uh, oil first to get the flavor out of it. And then some ground pork. It's going to mix all around so it uh, separates. going to use a, um, a hot bean paste. It's got a nice spice to it. It's got some chilies and garlic, things like that in there. What was that you put in there? Oh. It's called hot bean paste. It's another thing that um, we do pick up from Chinatown. This can be from the market. From the market? Yeah. Is that available in Hilo, Ted? Yeah, uh, supermarket or rental food. You can buy like that. You would just put in about a half a cup of water. And this is our um, Chinese rice wine. Once again, you could substitute sake or a dry, a dry white wine for that. A little bit of salt, and a little oh, that bit of, smells good. I can smell it from here. A little bit of sugar, and some aloha shoyu. When we serve this um, at the restaurant, we actually serve it in a tempun style, which means that. Um, we serve it on a sizzling cast iron platter and these servers will take the eggplant out to the restaurant and then pour the sauce over it and it'll finish cooking right in front of the, uh, right in front of the guests. A 
and the flavor just soaks right into those uh, cuts that you've made. Exactly. Uh-huh. Well, I've learned something new this evening. It's going to add a little bit of cornstarch to thicken the sauce. Well, after these Focus on Ag series on cooking, maybe I might become a chef. Okay, and the eggplant is ready. going to garnish it with a little bit of uh, green onions just for color. And that is, mmm, that smells good and I bet it tastes just as well. There we go. Okay. And uh, next, uh, uh, Buddha Delight, right? Exactly. We're going to be doing um, the Buddha Delight, which is our vegetarian dish on our menu. It looks like first David's going to take out the, um, the sweet rice meatballs that we had in the steamer earlier. And you can see after being in the steamer for about half an hour, the, the uh, rice is gotten softer and we have the pork filling in the center there we go and let's see if we can get an overhead of this there we go doesn't that look nice okay then we have the Buddha delight exactly this is um our vegetarian dish on our menu and uh, it's going to start with some um, vegetarian ham, some baby carrots and some green peas. What David has here is um, it's called jai. It's like a, uh, almost like a tofu. If you don't can't find this, you could use a deep fried tofu product also. Maybe I can put that on the Elmo and. Uh... Can you folks see that? It says fried gluten, soy sauce, m monosodium glutinate, and water. So, again, this dish here has uh, ajinomoto in it, so if you're allergic to that, you uh, have to be careful. Okay, back to you folks. Okay, David's just uh, getting the recipe ready here. He's going to slice up a little bit of the vegetarian ham. This is a soybean product. And where can you get that vegetarian ham? It's from Honolulu, Chinatown. Honolulu? Yeah. Chinatown? Yeah. It's really it's made in Maybe I, Japan. Maybe if I can have that, I'll uh, put that on the Elmo. And if uh, we can have the Elmo, there we go, a vegetarian ham, which is a soybean protein, tanpaki. And you say you can get this in Chinatown? Yeah. Okay, you can get this in Chinatown for all you vegetarians.
And uh, what is that? Uh, I believe they call it uh, bok choy. You can use any type of green leafy vegetable that you want for this. If you have Chinese cabbage, um, just about anything will work fine. This again is a um, recipe that David would um, normally prepare in the wok at the restaurant. And uh, where, where is Banyan Hibachi located, uh, Michael? We're located right on Banyan Drive, um, right on the main road. Uh, we're in the parking lot of the Nani Loa Hotel. And um, you can, when you come to the restaurant, you can use any of the spaces, any of the parking spaces at Nani Loa are available to you. And so, though, so our viewers on uh, Oahu and Kauai, and of course Maui, uh, they want to come to Banyan Hibachi. Uh, take a left uh, when you get out of the airport, and go straight down towards the hotels and find the Nani Loa Hotel. And I think Banyan Hibachi is located right before the Nani Loa Hotel. That's correct. And again, you're just open for We've been lunch and dinner? Exactly. Um, we're open Monday through Saturday for lunch and dinner. And 11 to 1 for lunch and 5 to 9 for dinner. Uh, that was green, chopped green onions you put in there first? A little bit of green onions. Put it in the oil just to release the flavor. And then he'll be adding the rest of the ingredients here. This is a really quick dish to cook. He started with the, um, with the uh, leafy vegetables here just to help them uh, break them down a little bit so they're not quite as chewy. Add a little bit of salt for flavor, a little bit of white pepper, this is truly a vegetarian dish. And here's our um, Chinese rice wine. I was maybe uh, you can get me that uh, rice wine there, uh, Mike, and sure. uh, maybe I can put it over the Elmo so people can see what it's. And let's see if I can get this on the Elmo. There we go. Shao, S-H-A-O, uh, Zing, X-I-N-G, rice wine. Now available in Chinatown, over there on Mauna Kea Street, for those of you on Oahu. Okay, back to the cooking. David uh, just finished the dish here, just putting it on the plate. And that was very uh, fast to prepare. Uh, let's see if we can just put that right there. And that's something that uh, the housewife can put together when she gets home from work. And do you think we, we, we would have time for the spring roll, or do you think, uh, uh, what do you think? How long will it take? It would take about uh, five, about five to ten minutes to make the uh, spring rolls. Well, maybe what we can do is uh, field some questions while we make the spring roll. Would that be all right? Absolutely. Okay. 
Okay, we, me, we uh, come to that portion of the class where those of you in the viewing audience and of course those of you here in the studio can ask questions of our guest speaker. Uh, the phone numbers are on the screen. The numbers are 974-7726 and 974-7727. And uh, those of you on the outer islands, you can call us collect right at 961-9046. And at this time, uh, the Banyan Hibachi people, uh, namely, uh, we Chen, the, the chef there, will be preparing a summer summer roll. And uh, we have a caller, so while we makes the summer roll, uh, we'll take the first caller. Will you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Where are you yes, calling uh, from? Uh, this is one of your most favorite uh, students from Mountain View. Oh, okay. I would like to see him do the uh, eggplant again, how he cut it. That was so fantastic. First time I've ever seen that. Okay. Uh, I guess I called one of my buddies up who was a graduate of HGC also, and he would like to see how he cut that uh, eggplant up. What a okay, well, let's see. Uh, we, uh, do you think you might be able to do uh, another uh, demonstration of that eggplant, how you cut that eggplant uh, real quick, and then uh, then maybe we can go on with the spring roll. But uh, I think that's my good friend Sarge uh, from Mountain View calling, uh, ex-guest on uh, Focus on Agriculture and excellent chef himself. And uh, what we will do is to... Uh, See if we can cut that uh, eggplant real quick. Uh, this is the way to cut the long eggplant so that uh, the, the flavors get into the eggplant while you fry it. Or I, I guess you could also hibachi it at the same time. Then you just turn it around and cut the other diagonal. Except he's making sure that these cuts kind of like a herringbone cut, and then just flex and a little hold bit. Hold it, hold it real still. So hold it down on the cutting board so they can see it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, Sarge, there you go. And maybe you can just bend it. Oh, just hold it on the cutting board now. There you go, so the camera can see. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Wee. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Yeah, hi, this is Tom from uh, Waimea. Okay. And I was calling, uh, incidentally, I've eaten at the Banyan Hibachi many times. It's uh -huh. excellent food as well. Uh, the um, meatballs, was that out of uh, beef or pork? Well, the, they use ground pork, but uh, we said that you could also use uh, ground beef if you wish. I see. And I do they use MSG there at the Banyan Hibachi? Uh, no, is that don't. on the menu? We don't use MSG in oh. our um, fresh ingredients. Unfortunately, a few of the sauces that we get um, do have MSG in them, but we don't, we don't add any MSG into our recipes. I see. And tonight's uh, items that you're preparing are available on your menu on a daily basis? Most of the items are, several of them, like the fish and the um, tofu, are specialty items that we do only on occasion. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hill. You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Waimea. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where... Whoa. Oh, hi. Hi. Could, uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. I wanted to know um, that Chinese rice wine if you guys would bring in extra so your own customers could buy some from you guys? Yes. Michael? <laughs> I'm sure Ted would be more than happy to. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you for calling from Hilo. Uh, at the present time, I believe uh, we are preparing a summer roll for you. And Mike, you might uh, mention what's happening over there. 
Okay, what Ted has done is he's um, soaked some rice paper rolls in some water to um, uh, help prepare them, soften them up a little bit. And then he, Ted uh, just finished here chopping up some chicken breast. And he has the rest of the ingredients here on the side. We have some, some lettuce, some chives, some um, cooked shrimp, a little bit of basil, and some Chinese parsley. When you cook the shrimp for this recipe, you want to make sure that you boil it with the uh, shell on to keep it a little tender. And then he's gone ahead and also uh, cut the shrimp in half. And then he has some so min noodles here. Okay, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? I am calling from Washington, Oahu. Okay. And I'd like to know um, at what store in Chinatown we can buy that vegetarian ham. Okay. Uh, Ted, uh, do you recall what uh, store that was in Chinatown? Yeah, it was. Um, it was. Um, uh. I bet if you go to any one of those stores on Mauna Kea Street, they will. Uh, they they will probably let you know where where it is. Well, we. I think he's been going and looking and couldn't find it. You couldn't find it. Oh. No. It was um, Hawaii Grocery. Hawaii Grocery Supplies, I believe. Surprise. Right. Hawaii Hello. Grocery Supply. Okay, thank you. Thank you Bye. for calling from Wahiwa. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Yes, hi, I'm calling from Hilo. Mm -hmm. I'd like to know if you'd be able to show us how to make those flowers. Okay. Uh, that's going to take about five minutes, so what we're going to do is uh, we'll quickly prepare the spring roll, and then after that we'll try to get the flower in. How's Thanks. that? Thank you. Thank you for calling from Hilo. And Mike, you might, uh, and, and Ted, you might tell us what you're doing now. Okay, he's um, layered down some shrimp and some somia noodles and uh, some chives into the uh, spring roll. It's real important that you don't overstuff this because when you roll it, it may tear. I'm just going to put some fresh basil leaves around the top. Okay, we're, we're going to watch this for a sec, and then we'll take the collar. So if you're on the line, please hold. Uh, Some nice fresh romaine lettuce. Ted is uh, producing a spring roll, or a summer roll. And then a little bit of uh, Chinese parsley. So that was so many noodles that you put in there? Yes. Okay. And now he's going to gently roll this uh, rice paper. Very difficult. It tears really easily. Okay, we may as well take uh, the first of the three callers. Uh, will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Yeah, this is Long from Waimanalo, Oahu. Okay. Was the meatball with the muchi rice around? Mm -hmm. Was the rice washed? Sure was. Was the, uh, the, the rice, you wash the rice first, uh, and do you soak it or anything? Yeah. You wash it and soak the rice, the yeah, mochi rice. Soak. Yeah, it's pre-soaked and washed. And how long do you soak the rice? Three hours. Three hours? Yeah. You soak the rice for three hours. Three hours, okay, yes. thank you. Thank you for calling from Waimanello. Uh, we have another, oh, let's see, uh, wh uh, what's happening now, Mike? Ted's cut the summer roll in half, and then he's just going to um, finish it off by garnishing it with a couple of sauces. What we use is a, a uh, chili garlic paste and a hoisin sauce. Okay, uh, we'll take the next caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hi, I'm calling from Hilo. Mm -hmm. Do you have any vegetarian meals that you make and your sauces? Does it come anything that you make as a, like a low, low salt, sodium, anything like that? Uh, we do have the Buddha Delight on our menu as a uh, vegetarian dish. We also are very accommodating. Um, we can try and do any of our recipes uh, vegetarian. And we can also do any of our sausage, our sauces um, low sodium because we do make all of our sauces fresh for the most part. Oh, great, thanks. Thank you for calling from Hilo. And uh, Mike, can you update us on the summer roll? Okay, Ted's just finishing up here, and that's the, the um, chili garlic sauce on the right and a little bit of hoisin on the left. And that's how we serve that as an appetizer.
Okay, so we'll take the next call. Uh, caller, uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Kona. Okay. Why did you find out what kind of red fish was that? That was Kali Kali. Kali Kali, thank you. Thank you for calling. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Um, hi, this is Hao calling from Kohala Coast. Okay. I want to come in the, um, the Chinese yeah, um, he's great. We definitely go down to the restaurant and try it out. Uh, okay. I'm Chinese myself, and he's really uh, a good chef. Okay, well, thank you for those nice comments for uh, Wee Chen. Uh, I think Wee is from China, and uh, he's been a professional cook for six years, so plus he's been uh, cooking since he was a kid. Uh, I think uh, we, uh, you're going to, uh, are you going to prepare the uh, flour? So maybe if you can really hold that real uh, steady, then the camera can zoom in. So, you, so you've got to hold it very steady and the camera can zoom in while uh, we prepares a flour uh, using a beet. And from one beet, you can cut it in half and make uh, two flowers. So while we is making a flour, we'll, uh, Field the next caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Yes, this is uh, John Caffey calling from Kansas City. Uh, I've only been visiting here for the last five weeks, but uh -huh. uh, I had one of the best meals I've ever had at the Banyan Hibachi. Uh -huh. And my question is, what's the difference between a spring roll and a summer roll? Okay, I, I made that mistake by calling it a spring roll, but uh, maybe I can ask uh, Tom or Michael to answer that. Is there a difference between a spring roll and a summer roll? Uh, that's just our own name for it. Actually, they're very similar dishes. Um, of course, a spring roll is, a, um, I believe, a Vietnamese dish. We've adapted it a little bit to our own, but they're basically the same. And do you, and do you mind if I ask just real quickly, what, what would you say is the best uh, item on your menu? <laughs> My personal favorite um, is a tempanyaki New York steak that we do there. We serve it um, tempen style, which is on the sizzling platter, and it has a nice mandarin sauce on it. It's excellent. Well, I certainly appreciated your hospitality uh, during the dinner that you served to me, and it was the best meal I've had since I've been in Hawaii. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for calling, and we hope that you enjoy your stay in Hawaii. Uh, we is now preparing a flower using a beet, and uh, we'll, we'll host the next phone call while we is uh, preparing the flower. Will the caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hello, you're on the air. Hello? Go ahead. Uh, where are you I'm calling from? from? Kauai. Okay. On your rice meatballs. Yes. Can you use any kind of a rice? No, you have to use the uh, mochi rice, the sweet mochi rice. rice. Yes. What if you soak the regular, uh, other kind of rice, it comes out the same, it will stuck to the meatballs, right? Uh, it's not going to be as good. Uh, and then uh, the other one, the, the, the vegetarian one, can you can use real meat, well, like that, real ham? You can, but then it won't be a vegetarian. <laughs> but uh, it's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you for calling from Kauai. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Oh, hello? Hello, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm calling for the vegetarian ham. Uh-huh. I'm wondering if you guys would be able to bring it in to, to your restaurant for people to buy it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They say they could do that, but you're going to have to call uh, Banyan Hibachi first. Uh, Michael, you might give the phone number for Banyan Hibachi. It's 934 9188. 9188? 934 9188. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So maybe you better buy a lot of those. Uh, we have quite a few. Vegetarian <laughs> hams. Okay. Uh, we'll take the next uh, caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Yeah, I'm calling from Kealikikua, uh -huh. and the um, tofu mm -hmm. that you put around it is that, did you say that was um, um, egg white? That's right, oh, egg, egg white, white with cornstarch. Exactly. Egg white with cornstarch. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling from the west side of the Big Island. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? 
Oh, we don't have a caller. So uh, maybe uh, uh, Mike or, or Ted, can you explain what the Wii is doing now? Uh, He's um, just making some incisions by going right around the, uh, the radish here, cutting out some petals. He's rounding it um, at the moment by just making a slight incision at the top. And he's about to start a new row of petals. Just okay, cuts right in. I don't into know. If, uh, <clears throat> we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Yeah, this is Mark from uh, Pona. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just kind of have a question of your hours of operation there at the Banyan Apache. OK. Well, when are you open, uh, Mike? We're open every day, uh, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 1 for lunch, and 5 to 9 for dinner. I'm sorry, uh, 11 to 1 for lunch? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling from Kona. Uh, and do we have another caller? We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from, and Go Hello? ahead. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, calling from Kauai. This is Aburi from Kauai. Okay. And I'd like to know if you guys get uh, vegetarian spam. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like spam. I like mix them in the vegetarian. Uh, you get uh, vegetarian spam. No, sorry. No vegetarian spam. No vegetarian spam, but if I if I can have that uh, loaf again, I can put it on the Elmo, and okay. uh, show it to yeah, you. Yeah, let's see that. Okay, uh, especially for our caller from Kauai, I am going to put on the vegetarian ham for you. Uh, Where can you get it, Baga? You get this. Uh, well, you know, if you if you're in Hilo, you can call nine three four. 9188, that's Banyan Hibachi, and they have a lot of this on hand. Uh, but unfortunately, you're from, from Kauai, so uh, where, where did you get this, Mike or Ted? Honolulu. Oh, this is, you can purchase this in Honolulu okay. in uh, Chinatown? Yes. A store okay. called uh, Hawaii Grocery Supplies. Right. You can use any vegetarian meat, uh, vegetarian kind of meat instead of that. Any well, type of actually, you, you can use whatever you wish, but if you want it truly vegetarian, uh, you should use this vegetarian ham, which is a soybeans protein yeah, uh, can be mixture. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you for calling from Kauai. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Hello, you're on the air. I guess we lost. Uh, calling from Hilo. Okay. Um, you know that tofu stuff. Mm hmm Do you guys have to use tofu or can can do without the tofu? Uh, Ted, you know that uh, what was it? The fong yo fong yon tofu. Can you? <laughs> I guess it's the fong yon tofu. So you've got to use tofu, but can you use something else? Um, <laughs> like you've got to use a shrimp to replace the scallops. Oh well, yeah, yeah. You you can you you can use. Well, is there anything else without like without using the tofu? Yeah, like what you want to use? You could. Can you use? Uh, hmm. I don't know if you can. Can you replace the tofu with something else? Yeah. I'm uh, asking the cooks here, and uh, as I long think as, as long as it's something that you would be able to make that cut into, so you could put the filling inside. Otherwise, the filling would probably just drop right out of the um, egg white. Thank you. Okay. Well, that was a that was a real tough question for the people. <laughs> so, uh, did, did did you get an answer to that one, or can you use something else? I think tofu is the best one. So tofu is probably the best uh, for that particular dish. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hi, I'm from Pune, and I was wondering where do you get your hot bean paste from? Okay, hot bean paste. Uh, why don't you bring it over here and I'll put it on the Elmo. And uh, you get that at the same place? Uh, no, actually, you can get from Hiro. Uh, okay. Supermarket, oh, Oriental Food. You got the cover for this? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to make the Elmo kind of messy here. Okay, we got the cover on the, uh, the hot bean sauce, and we're going to put it on the Elmo. And there we go. 
This you can get at the supermarket here in the oriental section. It's a hot bean sauce. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling from Bye -bye. Kona. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Hi, I'm from Waipahu. Okay. And um, I want I have a question about that tofu dish again. Okay. Um, how much cornstarch was being used? About approximately how much cornstarch was being used per egg white? Okay, uh, how many egg whites did you use and about how much uh, corn uh, We used corn? about uh, five egg whites and about four heaping tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay. So just about one tablespoon per, uh, per tofu. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling from Waipahu and you know Wei is an expert and he made it look easy so let us know how it turns out. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question please. Hi, I'm calling from Hilo and I just wanted to know if uh, Mike was single. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's your friend? Yeah, he's single. Oh, okay. Thanks. Look out, Michael. The phone number is 934-9188. Thank you. Thank uh, we you. have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Hi, yes. Hello? Yes, go ahead. I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. And I have an answer instead of a question. Okay. I, um, first time saw your vegetarian ham. Uh huh. And observed there's a lot of people interested. Um, there is a store in Hilo that sells what they call vegetarian wham, which is like a ham. And they sell the chai pao cans that you were showing that uh, you use in that dish. And they sell vegetarian hot dogs and vegetarian scallops and uh, lots of vegetarian items and it's uh, just available one day a week here in Hilo if people are interested. It's at Mauna Loa School, open from 10 to 12 on Monday. And that's all, just for two hours at Mauna Loa School. A lot of these vegetarian things that we don't have that vegetarian ham, that'd be very interesting to get. Okay. Maybe well, they could get some. Uh, what day was that and what time? It's on Mondays. Uh -huh. From 10 o'clock in the morning to 12 noon, just for two hours. Okay, and that's okay. at, uh, what, where, where was that again? Mauna Loa School is located on Kapiolani Road, uh -huh. down from the police station. Okay. And they sell all kinds of vegetarian uh, dishes that you could do with vegetables like this. Very, very interesting. Okay, well thank you for the, the uh, hint there. Yes, thank you. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Hi, this is John calling from KO. This uh, question is for Mr. Hill. Okay. Now that we all established that you're single. <laughs> uh, my question is not with your recipes. My question is more or less, where do you get all your supplies and or your utensils from? Or do you have a particular vendor or... Because I noticed I saw the gentleman banging the spoon around the skillet and most Teflon things won't handle that. We get... Um some of our supplies from Maui Hotel and Restaurant, but uh, now we've switched over to American. American restaurant supply? Exactly. And is the quality of their product uh, better or, or equal or is it a matter of cost? Or? It's a salesman. Just a salesman. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hill. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you for calling. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, Hello? please? Yes, go ahead. My Hello? question is, do you need a reservation? Do you need reservations at Banyan Hibachi? It's uh, not necessary, but we do ask on the weekends, especially that um, if you do have a large group, please call in and we can accommodate you a little better. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you for calling. We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? I'm calling from Pona. Okay. The food looks good and everything, but what is that he making with the red stuff? Okay. <laughs> what he's making is a nice flower out of a beet. Uh, this is just for decoration purposes, and uh, one of our callers in Hilo wanted to see uh, we make a uh, flower out of a beet, so that's what he's doing. Well, you can eat them too. You can eat them too. <laughs> Oh, it looks like it takes a long time to make. Is that an extra charge on the plate or something? That, there it is. Now, we're going to zoom in on that, and you can see what the flower looks like. Can you see it on television yeah, now? Yeah, I can see it on clear. There, there you go. So that's what uh, we is making, and uh, <clears throat> you can eat that. Yeah, I'll like, eat them right now. Oh, okay, come over and join us. 
<laughs> okay, well, hey. th thank you for calling. We have two more callers. Uh, will the first caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. Um, I just tuned in. Uh, your product is used for your, all your meals. Um, is it purchased locally? And um, are you into hydroponic or anything like that? Mike? Um, just about everything that we can get, we do get here in Hilo. Of course, we get our fresh uh, seafoods and our meats and things like that right here in Hilo. Um, once again, there are a few items like our, our rice wines and things that um, we've had to go um, to Oahu to get. But for the most part, we try to get all our fresh vegetables and whatnot right here. Oh, great. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. And we is now making that uh, protea-looking uh, flour. Uh, could the le uh, next uh, caller let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm calling from Kona, mm -hmm. and my question is, I tuned in a little late, and the tofu, was the tofu marinated? Was the tofu marinated? Yeah, no. before it went with the egg white? Oh, so I don't tofu. think so. It was uh, <coughs> stuffed with a... Uh, uh, scallop mixture. Scallop mixture with various... Uh, had some green onion, um, some white pepper, salt, and a little bit of um, ginger. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're well, thank you for calling from Kona. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please? Hi, this is Mana. I'm uh -huh. calling from Kyokoha. Okay. Could you please run those ingredients by me again that he used in the sauce over the eggplant? Okay, the uh, sauce for the uh, hibachi eggplant. What was that? I know you had some uh, some ground pork. Uh, we have some ground pork. There's some shoyu in there, some green onion, sugar, salt, um, some pepper and salt to taste, and a little bit of the uh, Chinese rice wine. Oh, there's that wine again. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, substitute that with sake or any type of uh, dry wine that you want. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for calling. And as I mentioned earlier, we will have a cookbook at the end of the semester. This is our third cookbook, I believe, or fourth cookbook, and uh, it'll have all the recipes in there. Uh, will the next caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with your question, please. Hi, I'm calling from Hilo, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was wondering about the spring roll, yeah, the... Uh, summer roll. Yeah, the summer roll. Okay. They cut the chicken out, the uh, uh, chicken bread. Yes. Did they put the thing in the uh, summer roll? Uh, no, uh, normally we would, it didn't make it in this time. We forgot to put that in, but uh, normally we do put the, the chicken breast inside. Okay. <laughs> My fault, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have completely run out of time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, our friends from Banyan Hibachi, uh, Fong Kuo, Michael Hill, and Wei Chen for joining us this evening. We hope that you will watch Focus on Agriculture again next uh, Thursday well. evening when we will have Cage Lunch Center. This is Jack Fuji saying thank you for watching and uh, have a good evening.